Well, just moments ago, brand new video of suspect Alec Murdoch showing him talking to police following the murders of his wife and son. As we're also waiting for redacted body cam video to be released from that night. In the new footage, you can see Murdoch sitting inside a police car wearing a white T-shirt, emotional and crying at times, explaining what happened. And I ran over to Maggie, and uh, actually, I think I tried to turn Paul over first. News Nation's Rich McHugh was inside the courtroom for day two of this trial. So, Rich, tell us what happened. Hey, good evening, Nicole. So, the, the headline was that we heard from three investigators who were first on the crime scene, one of them local, two of them state. And they basically went through what they, what they saw, what the, the horrific scene that they saw and how they processed it. But the real headline was that the jury in the courtroom got to hear 30 minutes of this video of Alec Murdoch talking to police. Take a look. Alec Murdoch wore a range of emotions in court today, at times calm, others agitated and rocking back and forth. Twice he broke down completely as three of the first responding authorities to the scene testified to what they witnessed firsthand. Detective Laura Rutland of the Colleton County Sheriff's Office brought the search warrant and offered her first impressions of the horrific scene. And then the first body that I approached was the deceased male. He was laying face down at an angle with his feet inside the plane of the door. There was obvious um, trauma to the top of his head. He was covered with a sheet, but I could still see the top of his head from underneath the sheet. Um, obvious trauma. There was brain, blood, hair, skull matter all within the feed room and the ceiling. Uh, there was a deceased female, uh, approximately 30 feet. Um, across from where his body was, and she was um, covered as well. But um, I had been told that they both had uh, gunshot wounds to their heads. She was one of the first to question Murdoch. At one point, they brought him into a police vehicle where a camera was rolling. This video, our first real look at Murdoch that night. When I came back here, mm -hmm. I mean, I pulled up and I could see him, and, you know, I knew something was bad. I ran out, I knew it was really bad. <laughs> My, my boy over there, I could see it was. <laughs> Murdoch, distressed but never too emotional, recounted his story that he went to his mom's, texted and called Maggie with no response, returned home to find their bodies outside. Murdoch said he went to check for a pulse on son Paul and attempted to turn his body over. I tried to turn him over and uh, I don't know, I figured it out. Um, uh, his cell phone popped out of his pocket. I started to try to do something with it, thinking maybe, but then I put it back down really quickly. He mentioned the boating incident that involved son Paul, and the investigators returned to that subject a few times over the course of the 30-minute video. Later, the prosecution asked Detective Rutland her impressions. She found it odd that he was checking on his mom that night, and he asked, given that it was such a bloody scene with blood spatter everywhere, did Murdoch appear to have blood on him? And you also told the jury that Alec was clean. And you're referring to his shirt was clean, correct? Correct. His shorts were clean, correct? Correct. And you remember the litany of Mr. Matters? Shorts, shirts, shoes were clean, correct? That's correct. He was clean. Now, the courtroom was virtually silent during the entire 30-some minutes when they played that video. Uh, court just wrapped up for the day and it resumes 9.30 a.m. Monday morning. Nicole. Oh, yeah, interesting things revealed today again. All right, Rich, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.